Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, The Rise of the Micro Brands. All right, so welcome back to another podcast. I'm joined today by Tom Meek. Tom is the Business Development Manager at Avask. It's an accounting and business consulting firm with a particular focus on corporate and private entrepreneurs' accounts selling on global e-commerce platforms. So focusing on a lot of Amazon accounts. Anyways, in today's episode, we're going to be diving deep into how you can properly prepare your business for global expansion and how to stay tax compliant. Now, before I get into that, let's talk with Kelsey. Hello. Hey, Kelsey. Oh, I should be telling everybody that we are broadcasting live on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. I should be telling people about smashing likes and ringing bells and all that stuff. Or am I taking away the job from you? That's my one and only job. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> all right. So yeah, smash those like buttons, uh, like and share the video. I see that we already have a couple of likes coming in. Perfect. Um, we have Angie coming in from Hey, LinkedIn. Angie. Hello, Angie. How are you? Um, yeah, so this is going to be a great episode and we're looking forward to it. Um, you can follow us on social media. We've got Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, if you happen to miss uh, some of the episode, you can always go to the YouTube channel. It's Norman Ferrar, and all the full episodes will be there, along with some fun highlights and, and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, we are a podcast too, so Apple and Spotify, you can find us there. Uh, just search Lunch with Norm, and that's about it. Oh, and how are you doing today, folks? Uh, let us know in the comments. And uh, yeah, how's your Wednesday? Anything new? How's your coffee? Um, and this, and we've got Marina joining us. Hello, hey, Marina. Hey, Marina. A nice, warm Toronto day. I can't believe it. Oh, yes. And before I forget, I always forget to say this, but we do have a pretty big giveaway today. Um, it's the biggest giveaway we've ever given away. Yeah. So stick around. Who knows? Maybe you'll have to answer a question from the podcast today. I don't know. Um, or, yeah, but yeah, listen to the podcast. Wait Be honest, the we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so that's it for me, and we'll get started. Okay, so just, uh, just to add, uh, so if you are on a replay, uh, skip ahead, and you can just watch this, get right into it, and see what Tom and I are talking about. Uh, if you are on my personal Facebook page, it's always good to skip over to the uh, official fan page uh, at Norm, uh, Norman Ferrar, a.k.a. The Beard Guy, and you'll see a lot of, uh, well, you'll see the whole episode as well as highlights and video. Uh, I just realized I didn't turn my phone off, and I can just imagine it's going to go uh, off at any time. I'll try to turn that off in a second. Anyways, look, uh... If you have questions, like Kelsey said, throw them over into the common area and we will try to get to every question. If not, uh, we will have uh, we'll have Tom answer them a little bit later on. So the big, the major thing that we can do right now is just sit back, relax, grab your cup of coffee and enjoy the show. All right, Tom, where are you? Hello. Hi, Hello, how are you? sir. It's been a while since we've been able to uh, get together. It's been a very long time. I think we must be what, coming up uh, nearly a year now, surely. Yeah. Where, was it in San Francisco? It was. It was oh, my um, gosh. Uh, yes. Yes. It was, uh, I think, at the beginning of, of this year. So uh, absolutely flown by. So uh, all I can remember, guys... If you were a fly on the wall at this uh, dinner that we went out to, <laughs> my I think my stomach is still hurting. I, I've got a ton of pictures that I can blackmail, you know, most of the people at this company. And I, or yeah. Oksana was there and she was, it was incredible. We had a blast. And so the reason I'm bringing that up is that um, we really didn't know each other. Um, we went to one other conference that we sat down and you know had a few drinks, but um, we met a second time almost a week apart and just really got to know each other. 
And from that time on, now you've got that network. So I always like to bring in how you can expand your business, how you can expand your network. And it doesn't have to be about business. I, we talked, we don't think we talked at all about business um, during uh, most of, well, probably 90% of the time, 99% of the time we were there. So yeah. that's always a benefit. And I've got those pictures where if I ever need a little bit of cash, please I can don't, always please don't bring them out today. <laughs> yeah. Also, just, just to, uh, to add to that, you know, I, I still speak to everyone that we've met that day on a, every, every month at least. Um, so it's great to stay in touch with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And um, also, Oksana's usually on because we'll see her make a comment here. So I wonder if she's there and I'm sure she remembered that. So anyways, it was a great night and also got a chance to really get to know you. So for us that don't know you and do not know your company, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, of course. So uh, my name's Tom. Um, I manage the international business development team here and have done for uh, almost three years now, uh, which has gone extremely quickly. Um, and uh, what does the company do? Well, we're an accounting and business consultant. Um, ultimately, our, our mission as a, a company is to really help uh, entrepreneurs and e-commerce sellers that are looking to expand their business uh, and essentially help them with the VAT, taxes, sales tax, GST, whatever it might be, when looking at the new opportunity in that marketplace. So um, trying to simplify everything in bite-sized chunks whilst um, making sure that we offer a very high level of consultancy and uh, being able to assist sellers all over the world. Uh, we deal with something silly like um, over 50 countries, our clients are from over 10,000 clients and over 20 languages. And everyone asks me what languages I speak, just the one, uh, which is very disappointing, I know I'm sorry. Um, but in terms of who we are and what we do, we assist with um, companies worldwide to help with their expansion objectives through helping them with their sort of VAT uh, registration and compliance services. You, uh, you know, you brought up translation and uh, we always talk about, uh, you know, making sure that you use professionals. Uh, that's one area where you want to want to use a translator. I got a, just a quick story for you. Uh, we, we were printing some cards up and so uh, for this one company. And the company said that they would take care of the Spanish translation. I'm in Canada. I would take care of the Canadian uh, or the French and the English, of course. And uh, the cards went out. These were uh, New Year's and Christmas cards. Well, we started getting complaints about the Spanish translation. It was Happy New Year. Uh, sorry. Merry Christmas and Happy New Ass. <laughs> So we got to, we got, and of course we were blamed for it, right? You know, oh, of course. But uh, anyways, we got them to sign off. So always remember to sign off, you know, to make sure that you're, you know, it doesn't fall back on you. But anyways, let's, let's talk about, this is a really great topic today. And, you know, one of the things that I've noticed when um, I talk to a lot of different Amazon sellers that they think uh, .com is it. And when I've gone to uh, to events all over, I, you know, if I if I'm in Europe or you know, uh, this this really kicked in when I was at an Israeli conference and uh, with Tomer Rabinovich at his Top Dog conference, and we were talking to all these people over there, and people were saying, "Oh yeah, like you know, I'm a million dollar seller uh, only in Europe. I, I don't want to go to .dot com." And you hear more and more of that sort of mentality where a lot of the European sellers think that there's less competition over in the uh, EU. And why bother? Because it's so competitive over in .com. And on the other side of it, um, there's a lot of .comers that don't realize the potential over in Europe because they think it's a hard and arduous task. Um, why don't we talk about that? Let, you know, do you think, do you think, uh, you know, this is still the case? Absolutely. I think, um, yeah, it's, uh, it always seems to be whenever you speak to a seller, wherever they're sort of incorporated, wherever they're from, they know the tax system. That's what they're used to. Um, but when they start looking at other marketplaces, even the slight change in terminology from sales tax to VAT, no, not going to touch it, scares people off. And, it's amazing, really, because I speak to so many different sellers um, all around the world on, you know, on a daily basis, and um, they just 
um, the, 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 the basics stay the same. You know, you still have those thresholds in place. You still need to know the same you know, guidelines on, on expanding, but just very slight tweaks in the different marketplaces that are available. But definitely agree, agree with that statement, yeah. So if, if you could give us a, 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 just a couple one, two, threes about how hard is it to set up? If I want to go to the uh, EU right now, start selling, what are a couple of things that I've got to keep in mind? Yeah, of course. So it depends on, on a number of different things, but I would say as a, a US-based seller that's looking to expand to the EU, well, firstly, the first thing that the people trip up on is whether they need to actually establish a new entity in the EU or UK. Um, and you don't. It's so, so straightforward. You can actually use your US entity to set up a VAT number in the EU. Um, and that's what you need to be able to actually start storing your stock there. So firstly, you don't need to, to incorporate a new subsidiary or new company in the EU. You can use your current company. Uh, I would say number two is sales tax and VAT are very similar, but they are also very different, which I know is a little bit confusing. But the reason I say that is because when you look at sales tax, sales tax is added at checkout. Um, and it's not incorporated within the sale price, whereas VAT is incorporated within the sale price. So making sure that when you're looking at sort of competition and looking at your um, opportunity and visibility online, it's very important to understand that that sale price is inclusive of tax, that 20% VAT, that value added tax, which is the equivalent to the sales tax in the USA. And then another um, a very common thing that, that people need to realize when expanding into the EU um, is yes, you need a VAT number wherever you're storing your products, similar to physical Nexus, but you've also got the benefits of thresholds in place when you trade from one country to another. So don't think from the start that you need to have all of your VAT numbers in place before you can actually start selling in the EU. You can actually have just your VAT number in, let's say, Germany, and then you can take the benefits of selling from Germany into France, to Italy, into Spain, and so on. So it's actually much, much easier than people think, as long as you get a company like Avask or, or one of the other providers out there to guide you on that step-by-step -step as to what you actually need to think about before you get to the marketplace and before you start selling. There is a threshold uh, before you have to start paying uh, VAT tax. What What is that threshold? So um, there's a number of things that, that, that could be referring to there. So as a US client, for example, that's looking to start selling in the UK or EU, which I'm sure we'll come on to later with Brexit and all things concerning that. Um, but ultimately what you need is a VAT number as soon as you start storing products in that country. Okay, so that's the main thing. Similar to physical nexus, as soon as you've got your stock stored there, you're going to need to have that sales tax number. Um, in terms of, you know, looking at um, what is actually required or looking at the threshold, as you said, unless you're going to incorporate as a, a UK or you know, maybe a German or French company, for example, if you look at the UK and you incorporate a UK entity, which I would say is very very unlikely that a seller would want to do that. Then there are some tax benefits, um, such as like the 85,000 threshold before you need to register for VAT. Usually that is for uh, UK residents. Um, but in the main, it's important to realize that if you are a US seller looking to expand to the UK or EU market, um, it's very, very straightforward. And all you need is that VAT number and an EORI number, which will allow you to send your goods in clear your goods at customs, where you pay the duties and the import VAT, and then you'll be able to start selling cross-border from there. So that's as straightforward as it, as it is. So I had a client uh, last year who uh, did an absolute 100% no-no. He didn't pay his tax. And, <laughs> you know, if you think you're in the U.S. and uh, you, you don't have to pay that tax, he got dinged. Um, almost 800, over $800,000 pounds. Right. So he got away with it. I don't know how or why he would do it, but then, you know, 
he, uh, he was trying to figure out how he can either close his business or it didn't make sense. Like he, he would go under, but, um, anyways, that happened. And, um, you know, if you're trying to hide, uh, just like you are, you know, if you're doing that with the IRS, it's not a matter of time. It, the, I mean, it's just a matter of time. They will catch up. It's not, you know, you can't hide. Um, I just wanted to, I just noticed that we've got a bunch of people on here. And I just, at this point, just wanted to give a cute few shout outs out. So hard for me to read. Kelsey, if I miss anybody, let me know. I see we have right Gila here. on, Yarrow's back on, uh, Timmy's back on. Hey, glad to see you. you. We're able to get back on. I haven't seen you in a little while. And Alan, I'm expecting Alan to pipe up. Uh, he's up in, um, he's in Singapore, Singapore. I think today, yes. but, um, Anyways, if any of you have any questions uh, for uh, for Tom, let me know. Now, it looks like Tom's... I think he's just adjusting to them. Oh, we'll back. okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. All right. Yeah, you got me a little worried there. <laughs> no, so, I realized I was running low on Jeeves, so I thought I'd uh, just uh, top her up. No problem. So the next thing I, I, I like to talk about is there's been changes and, um, you know, we, I want to get into the changes, but what are the tax requirements when expanding into the new market? Yeah. So tax requirements, um, we've touched on them very lightly, but I would say, um, in terms of sort of general rule of thumb is what are the tax requirements when you're looking at expanding into the UK and EU? Okay. Well, there's two main reasons why any seller will need to register for VAT in the EU. And this is what you need to do if you're looking to start selling. And I'm sure there's some people here that are listening that are already selling. So the first thing is that if your products are stored in the UK or any, in an EU country, then you're going to need to register for VAT as soon as you actually have your product stored in that country. That's number one. So wherever you're storing, you're going to need to register for VAT. Now, with the UK and EU, again, coming on to Brexit probably a little bit later, but what you're able to do is, is make the most of what's called the distant selling thresholds, okay? And all that means is when you sell cross-border from one country to another, from one EU country to another. Um, and what these thresholds actually allow you to do is they allow you to let's say I'm going to hold my, um, say I'm selling uh, phone cases. I'm going to sell them on Amazon.com, doing really well, I'm thinking of expanding to the EU, or well, what are the next steps? Well, I'm going to need to make a shipment from, let's say, um, sets from China, I'm going to be shipping them to Germany, okay? So what do I need at this stage from sort of a VAT and tax point of view? Well, firstly, I need an EORI number, an EORI number, which is a number that allows you to clear your goods at customs. That's number one. Without that, your goods aren't getting in. So, you know, don't bother unless you've got it. Once you've got the EORI number, you're going to need to have a BAT number in place, of course, which comes alongside the EORI, which will allow you to then store your goods in Germany in this case. Okay. Now, as soon as you've got that BAT number in Germany, you are required to file on a monthly basis um, by a certain date in each country, and that differs from country to country, which is what your tax advisor will make sure that they monitor and stay on top of for you. Um, and ultimately, it's just a case of uh, then filing the VAT in accordance to the sales that you make. Okay, so there's two taxes. I'll break them down very, very quickly, or three really. When you bring your products from China into Germany, you're going to pay two taxes as you import. Okay, so one is an import VAT, which will be uh, the percentage of the country that you're importing to, which in this case, 19% VAT in Germany. So you'll pay 19% import that on the cost value of your goods at that point. And you'll also pay customs duty. Very similar situation to shipping anywhere around the world. You'll have that, that duty element to pay. So that import VAT and that import duty is calculated on the cost value of goods as you bring your products into Germany. And then once you've got them in Germany, of course, you're going to start making sales. So let's say you sell all of your products, you're going to be paying 19% sales VAT on those transactions that you sell. And you're basically acting as a tax collector for the authorities in that country. And then you're going to be required to 
file that VAT and pay the VAT to the authorities because you're acting as a tax collector. Now, that's not it because you are able to reclaim the import VAT, that 19% as you came in at customs with your EORI, you're then able to reclaim that and offset that against the sales VAT due. Okay, so hopefully that's broken that down a little bit more. I, I think that was really clear. Um, I, I do have a question about when I'm bringing in products. So let's say I, I'm bringing in my soap. So I uh, this just happened in Canada. So I got nailed for um, uh, labeling. So my my actually right now my most of my product is suspended because of labeling. This just happened. And uh, if I'm going over, if I want to sell my soap over in Europe, are there certain things that I have to look at before I can actually, you're talking about importing, but I've got to, uh, uh, like if I just sent over my soap right now, would it be turned away? Or how do I know what type of, um, uh, what, what type of information I need to add to my labeling or the product specs that have to be on my uh, product that I want to uh, sell over there? Yeah. So it's a really good question. Um, and a lot of sellers don't do sort of that due diligence before they actually expand to a new market. And there's like that sort of checklist of things that you need to cross off. And I would say label compliance and understanding sort of the requirements of uh, what's in my product. Is it actually safe? Is it eligible to be sold in this market? So, um, I mean, we work with um, a lot of partners across the board that are able to assist sort of with that label compliance and setting up um, in terms of making sure that your products are eligible to be sold. Um, so we work with a, a company called Global E-Commerce Experts that a lot of our clients use with regards to labeling and sort of just general compliance. Um, there are sort of certain products that may be classed as dangerous in some way that might be um, illustrated in perhaps like a CE marking. Um, and in some cases, you may need a representative um, so that uh, that your products will be compliant. So that if the uh, government, for example, was to say, well, you know, we'd like to inspect this, then there needs to be some sort of place of fulfillment. Maybe that's a 3PL provider, which is what GEE, Global E-Commerce Experts, offer, um, and like a registered address to that product so that there's actually one on shelf that, that they're able to inspect. So really important that you get that product compliance. The majority of clients that we speak to have already understood, you know, whether their products are already going to be sold, but a good example there, soaps and different sort of moisturizers and things can sometimes be a little bit, uh, or definitely be a little bit more cautious when expanding into new marketplaces. Just make sure you do a bit of research uh, on the on the codes there, um, but feel free to reach out to us on a case by case and we can go through that. And I guess it's pretty important too, depending on your product, uh, you've got to do some uh, audience research as well. You know, if, um, one of the things that we did, just to give you an example, and it has nothing to do with Europe, but uh, Japan. So we have the soap. We, we can sell it in North America, no problem. Um, but when I lived in Hawaii, I noticed that there was a lot of Japanese and they would be buying anything Hawaiian, anything Hawaiian. They love Hawaii. And so what I targeted was uh, the Japanese audience loving Hawaiian soap or Hawaiian product, packaged it completely differently, sold it over in Japan and a $10 bar of soap. Now look, at it, it'll be swamped with everybody. But it ended up being $24 to $30 for a bar of soap. And people loved it because it came from, uh, from the US, but particularly Hawaii. Now I could have done that and packaged it a completely different way and it would have probably failed. Um, just because I knew that. So I think it's very important even going over there, just because you're going over to um, Europe doesn't mean you're going to be successful. You do have to know your audience. And uh, uh, is that something like if somebody went to you, to your company and said, like, this is my product. I've got, you know, these Norm the Gnome gnomes. Um, you know, do you think it would fly? Uh, would you give your opinion on that? Or would you? Would I buy them? Oh, um, well, well I, I give you the ASIN right now. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think um, it's uh, it's something that we're always happy to have an open conversation about. Um, there was, um, and, and it really depends on the product range. Obviously, we're happy to give an opinion. Uh, we know our market. We live in the UK, but there's also the rest of the EU, Italian, French, German, Spanish. 
Um, and I can't speak for all of them, unfortunately. Right. But in terms of sort of product research, knowing your business, knowing your your um, your numbers, of course, and and also just understanding um, what would be well received in each market is extremely important. Um, which is why we always encourage sellers to bring over a number of assets to um, Europe when they when they do come, not just bring their number one in the US. Because you really want to test the market, you want to get a good understanding for what sells well where. Um, so a lot of people will tend to sort of dip their toe in the water as such before they then really start going in on sort of the advertising and making sure that they've got everything set up and really pushing hard. So I would say it's definitely a case of easing in. Um, but in answer to your question, um, we would hate to uh, to say no, that wouldn't sell well. They sell and it does sell well. We don't want that on us. But always happy to give our open opinion on uh, what they're selling. And, and if I if I see a product, I'm like, that is awesome. I think that would sell really well, of course. The other thing I'd be looking at, too, is uh, for sellers, is there a bottom line where, OK, you, you shouldn't even look at Europe or expanding? Um, I know what, what I tell people, like, you got to optimize uh, .com before you start looking elsewhere. But do you, is there um, a number, like if you're not doing $20,000 a month, don't bother looking or 10,000, I don't know. Is there a number or a rough ballpark that people should be looking at in the dot-com arena before they start selling over, over there? I get asked this question so much. And it's, um, of course, it's a difficult question to answer because there's no right or wrong answer to right. this. However, um, there's a number of things that I've put this down to. And yes, revenue or you know, turnover in the US is really important before you actually expand. So I think it comes down to, yes, do you have the capital to invest in getting your products here with the shipping, with the VAT numbers, the compliance, translations, all those sorts of things that you need to bear in mind before you get there. Um, I would say typically sellers that are sort of turning over really bottom line, so three, four hundred thousand dollars per annum would be sort of that lower benchmark in terms of expanding to Europe. Saying that, some people have been very successful lower, but a lot of people that seems to be generally sort of a couple of hundred thousand plus is, is starting to be where sellers tend to be before looking at expanding. But that you can look at that in two ways because when you look at um, trading in the UK and EU, there's number of different tax tactics you can take if i speak to a seller that's turning over 50 million in the us and they're looking to start launching in the uk and eu my advice would be very different to someone that's turning over as you say like two ten thousand a month for example because you can as, as i said before you can sort of dip your toe in the water and start with one country and trade under the distance selling thresholds into the others or you can go absolutely you know full full guns blazing and you can register for vat in all of the countries and have that prime eligibility if you're on amazon fba and have the quicker shipping the local uh, the um, local fulfillment fees instead of sort of cross-border fees so there's a number of different advantages from going all the way but it's also much heavier cost so i would say in answer to your question um, i would say yes um, sellers tend to, to have that benchmark before they expand, but it depends on resources, it depends on sort of the, the capital, it depends on the time that they've got to actually invest in the research and all of the other things that come alongside it. Okay, and you were just talking about, again, multi-country. The benefits of registering or working with pan-European you know, so, so so we can take advantage of it because you, you don't have to take advantage of it. But what are the uh, advantages of um, being registered uh, to use pan-European? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, to take a step back to go forward. So what we're referring to here is um, with FBA, all about fulfillment, of course. It's all about where your products are stored. Um, now, if you look at um, you know, the, the technical term is EFN um, versus you know, MCI and Pan EU. So it's all about how many countries are storing in. So if you look at an EFN set, which stands for European Fulfillment Network, as we go back to that example I used earlier with Germany, you bring your iPhone cases in from China, they get cleared at customs, you've got your product stored in Germany. 
then if you're under the EFN, it means your products are just stored in Germany and you're selling cross-border into France, into Italy, into Spain, which is the great thing about Europe because it's got multiple marketplaces within the EU, within that territory, unlike the US. So you've got multiple different countries to sell to under the threshold. Everyone has a different sales threshold, um, most common 35,000 euros per calendar year. But what that allows you to do is only have tax compliance requirements in just the one country. So you only need to register and comply with the taxes in Germany until you breach those thresholds. Now, on the other side, if you look at pan-European, the pan-European means that you're storing your stock in really six countries post-Brexit or seven, including the UK currently. So you send your products into Germany, Amazon will get, or whatever country you pick for that, for that matter. And then Amazon will then redistribute your products across the other countries. So UK, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Poland, and Czech Republic make up what's called the pan-European program. Benefits of that uh, compared to the EFN is, well, if my products are in Germany on the EFN and I'm selling to a buyer in the UK, it's going to take a hell of a long time to actually get there. Whereas if my products are already in the UK because Amazon have already distributed them across their network, it's going to be much quicker. So it's prime eligibility. Um, you also pay the local fulfillment free through FBA um, if you are already in the country, as opposed to selling from Germany to the UK, which is cross border fee or Germany to Italy, whatever it might be. Um, so they're the two main benefits, I would say. Um, and obviously, there's hundreds of millions of Prime subscribers out there. I'm one of them. I filter by Prime. If your products aren't on Prime, I'm not going to see them because I want the next day delivery. So you're really cutting your market off unless your products are close enough to your buyers, which is where the Pan-European program comes into full effect. Great. Just one sec. I I know I was going to cough. So. <laughs> okay. You're wishing I was talking for a bit longer there. Yeah, just, you know, just <laughs> five seconds more would have been okay. So, uh, all right. So, Kels, can we talk? Uh, there's two questions, I think. Yeah. So, one is a comment from Timmy. Uh, okay. Guys, due diligence is needed when planning to sell in a new territory. Uh, stuff like names on labels, which have different meanings, which might be offensive in another language. So, I think that's pretty fair to say. Um, do your research yeah. on, on the translation side it's so important to get right as as you said norm um, with your cards um translations a lot of people go on the cheap side and do google translate oh. um translations isn't sort of our, our forte as a company but it's part of the journey that we take people through because it's essential to get right yes you can use google translate i wouldn't advise it but there are some companies out there that are very competitive that will do everything for you and you'll find that your sales will be boosted because of having the localized language. And I'm sure you've had Yana on from YLT. Who Not we also yet, met. she's coming. But I was just going to say that that's where you should go. Just yeah. talk to Jana. And uh, Kelsey, we'll post that at the, the bottom here for translation. I mean, that's the person to talk to. I mean, Google Translate, if you're trying to do it on the cheap, um, even if you hire somebody from Fiverr, uh, there's certain words that, oh, they'll go to, you know, for five bucks, they'll go to Google Translate for you. But uh, you got to do it. You have to make sure you're, you, um, you translate it properly or you, it, things can get lost. But um, anyways, yeah, let's make sure that we put Jana's uh, contact information at the bottom. Yeah. yeah so, sure. um, and the next one is from Marina. Uh, I don't sell directly to consumers in Europe, but I have an online store in France that buys wholesale from me and resells. Do the same rules apply? Is there anything I should be aware of? So far, uh, just shipping products to them, not registered anywhere. Right, okay. I mean, there's, there's quite a lot of things that come into play when looking at um, the sort of di direct, sorry, directly buying through wholesale as well. So I don't directly... Uh, to uh, I don't sell directly to consumers in Europe, but I have an online store in France that buys wholesale from me and resells. Okay, so the rules are very similar, um, but it really does depend on a number of different things. So what I would recommend on this one is to reach out to us um, separately so that we can understand a little bit more about your situation, um, where they're selling to and what the requirements are. Obviously, that registration is required if you're physically holding stock in a country. 
um, and that's really, really important. So you may need to register, um, but where your structure might be slightly different from sort of a standard e-commerce seller that's um, selling direct to consumer, um, then that may slightly differ the advice that we give. But feel free to, to reach out to myself um, and we can sort of take that on um, sort of directly. Very good. Okay, and one just came in from Yaro. Um, if I have a listing with 200 reviews in the US, can I use it in the EU? Will the reviews be shared forever and timely added from all the marketplaces? Great question. Um, so with reviews previously, and I have to say previously, I'm not 100% right now, but previously, uh, let's say four, four to six months ago, it was the case that when you had US reviews and you launched in the EU, your reviews did follow. Now, I don't know whether that's still the requirement or still the process now, but I knew that certainly for a certain period of time, it would be a requirement uh, and would be the process that Amazon would follow. And that can be reflected in some new marketplaces. I've heard it happened in Australia as well, um, but that's, that's the process as far as I'm aware. Um, before, it didn't happen. Previously, and as in recently, I have seen that happen, but you might need to double check that. Okay. And I just wanted to remind everybody that in a few minutes, we're going to be giving away an incredible prize. Um, the biggest prize we've ever given away in the podcast history. So anybody that's listening, if you've got friends, go out, get them, make sure they're listening. And also Tom is going to be hitting some of the most interesting topics in the next few minutes. So, and that is the changes. What is happening with Europe right now with the changes to tax and with BRIEX? Absolutely. So um, well, I, I was waiting for this question. Um, <laughs> it's always an exciting one for everyone, of course. Um, Brexit. Uh, I'm sure everyone's familiar with, with Brexit. Um, obviously, the UK is uh, leaving the EU. We've been through a transition period for the whole of this year. And we are officially, uh, obviously, the UK will be a separate entity from the EU as from the 31st of December. So 1st of January 2020, we will be separate. OK, so as you've probably noticed when I've gone through a lot of these examples, I've been very cautious with the countries I've used on the basis that the UK is going to be separate. So. If you think that, um, especially for, for those people that are listening to uh, the, the podcast today that are selling already from the UK into the EU, that's the most common theme that we see. People use the UK. It's easy to register. It's easy customs clearance. It's easy to distance sell into Germany, France, to Spain. Um, so from that point, a lot of people are relying on Amazon FBA from the UK under the European Fulfillment Network, which is where you're distance selling into Germany. France, Italy, and Spain, which before or before the end of this year is absolutely fine. As we come on to the 1st of January and moving forward from there, it's really, really important that everyone understands that FBA, so Amazon, will not be fulfilling orders from the UK cross border into the EU. That's the main point, okay? And vice versa from the EU to the UK. So I want to touch on a few points on that and also give you a couple of actionable steps off the back of that that you can take away and make sure that you stay compliant when um, when you do expand or whether you have expanded already. So with that in mind, um, obviously there's a new customs border that has uh, arisen from the UK to the EU. So if you're sending a, a, an item from any country to any country, let's say UK to keep it simple to Germany, then as you send that product direct to a consumer in Germany, that product's gonna be liable to import duties um, and import VAT as well, okay? Now that import VAT is reclaimable if you're VAT registered in the country that you're selling to. So there's benefits of registering in countries that you're selling most stock to. But what the main point of all of this is how do you prepare? And this is sort of more of the actionable steps. Well, first of all, you're gonna need an an additional VAT number if you haven't got it already. So let's say hypothetically, most people watching are gonna be already registered in the UK. You're gonna be wanting to sell to the EU. How do you go about that? Well, you need an additional VAT number in the EU. 
So let's pick Germany. You register for VAT in Germany. Well, that takes a couple of months minimum. So bear that in mind with where we are in the year. Prepare yourself, get ready. Make sure you pick a country that's maybe a bit quicker than Germany, although it's the largest market in the EU. Maybe it's France, maybe it's Italy. Um, and then what you need to do is split your inventory. Speak to your shipping provider. Make sure that they send some stock into the UK to cater for the UK. It's its own country. It's its own marketplace. There is no inventory transfers. There's no cross-selling. So you need to have the UK catering for itself. And then you need to have shipments going to the EU as well to make sure that you have the EU catering for itself. And remember, the same FBA rules apply, that sort of MCI, PAN-EU, that cross-border fulfillment when you're in the EU still is operating and the PAN-EU program is still operating. It's just not from the, the UK because the PAN-EU and the European Fulfillment Network is all about the EU, which the UK will no longer be part of, okay? So it's really, really important that everyone understands that. So the additional VAT number or two VAT numbers, one in the UK, one in the EU as a minimum, okay, or more. The second point is the EORIs. So the EORI number, when we track back to the start, we talked about what an EORI number is. It's, good, it's a number that allows you to clear your goods at customs. You probably already have one if you're selling already. You're going to need an additional one that will be sufficient for the EU uh, if you've already got one in the EU, then you're going to need one for the UK. So it's vice versa. So let's say again that you've got a UK VAT number, you've got a UK EORI number, um, and currently you're trading just fine. What are you going to need? Well, you're going to need a German VAT number or, or a VAT number in another country, and you're going to need an EORI number to be able to clear those goods because you're splitting shipments. Okay. So hopefully that breaks it down as to how to prepare for Brexit in the best possible way. There are also a number of other changes that are coming with regards to sort of Amazon uh, potentially collecting and remitting for non-UK businesses as well. Um, there's still a lot of information that's still yet to, to fold out from that. Um, and plus there's more changes in July 2021, um, which are very exciting, which really just make taxes easier. So don't need, don't need to worry about them. Very good. Uh, I see Timmy sent over another question, Kels. Oh, yeah. He's just saying uh, things are going to be different post Brexit, definitely. And there's definitely going to be clauses that sellers need to be aware of going forward. And we are at the almost 45 minutes in. So we should okay. uh, get yep. into the very the giveaway, good the giveaway. So first of all, I, I just want to uh, talk about um, your company a bit. Uh, let's talk about some of the services that you provide. Yeah, of course. I mean, our, our core services um, and uh, sort of where, where the majority of, of the business that we deal with and entrepreneurs are obviously in the UK and EU. That's our sort of main focus. So UK companies or any anywhere really, they're looking to expand into other markets, but mainly UK, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Poland and Czech. I'm sure you probably know that Amazon have obviously opened up in Sweden, the Netherlands, um, Ireland is another um, country that you know, potentially has um, a marketplace coming in the, in the near future. I, I don't know that for sure, but we presume so, um, as well as others as well. So we're assisting VAT registration um, and also uh, compliance services in those countries. So that's our core business areas. But we also have uh, our UK accounting. So if you're looking to incorporate a UK company, if you're looking for sort of that bookkeeping accounting side, then we can deal with that. We also have the US accounting. So if you're a US business and you want a CPA that's dealing with your accounts, your bookkeeping, all the statutory requirements that, that obviously need to, um, to be filed, then we can also assist with that. And also sales tax, lucky us. We get to deal with both VAT and sales tax. Um, so definitely the EU UK, definitely the USA. Um, I would also say sort of the other marketplaces on Amazon, the majority that we deal with. So things like um, looking at uh, UAE, Australia, um, Saudi Arabia, uh, the list goes on. Um, I'm sure that if you've got a specific requirement, specific country that you're needing assistance in, feel free to reach out to us because I'm sure we'll be able to either help you, we'll be able to have a service offering for you, if not be able to point you in the right direction. So there are core services. Very good. Where did the name of VAS come from? It's a great question. It's one that I'm still trying to work out myself. Um, <laughs> And I actually, I got asked on another podcast about a month or so ago, saying, what does VASC stand for? And I was sort of like, 
I need to find that out. Um, but I, <laughs> I don't actually. I think it's it's uh, it definitely has has a, a meaning behind the Vask. Um, but it's uh, one of those uh, mysterious names for now that we'll have to find out more at another stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you could easily just make up the story, right? Well, I was going to, but what if I was wrong? <laughs> it might have been an insult. <laughs> so how do people get a hold of you? So, um, I mean, I've asked website, I've asked, uh, I've also got some great resources as well that I want to mention for any client that's with us. We have a website called um, theglobalexpanders.com, um, which is uh, loads of webinars, uh, industry experts coming on, similar sort of thing to, to this podcast of different people coming on, which is great. Um, and um, But in terms of how we actually get through, please come through the website. Please email myself at tom.meek. Um, my name is totally on screen at avaskgroup.com. Uh, otherwise, we have expansion at avaskgroup.com. Basically, type in Avask to your Google or to whatever search engine you're using and make an inquiry through there, and we will get back to you pretty much immediately. So that's A V A S K, guys. Uh, all right. Tom, tell us about the incredible, like, when we asked, uh, Tom at the beginning of the podcast. So, hey, is there anything that you can do? And uh, I thought, oh, okay, he's going to send over some lapel pins or a T-shirt. Anyways, he says, yeah, we could do this. And uh, my mouth dropped. <laughs> Why don't you? And I'll I'll let everybody know how you can claim this prize. But why don't you tell everybody about the uh, the prize as well as the kind of value? You know, the rough ballpark value of the prize yeah of course so uh, you want me to go through the offering the promotion yeah please yeah awesome so um obviously from anyone that's that's watching this now uh it's a bit of a race um to who comes through but um so for the first person that, that comes through to uh tom.meek at a vast group uh, .com, uh we'll offer a hundred percent off vat registration costs um which depending on the amount of countries that you go to, can um, add up to, to a very sizable amount, which I'll come on to in just a second. So first person that comes through is 100% of VAT registration. Uh, the next five people that come through are gonna have 50% off VAT registration. Um, and as we've discussed, depending on the amount of countries you go to, that can be uh, anywhere from say 250 pounds right the way through to 1750. So 1,750 pounds saving if you were to go for that, the full Panny U package. Um, so that's for the first person that contacts me. I'm sure, oh no, I thought that was, the, I thought I was already getting an email through there, but it wasn't. I was gonna um, say, if they post it in the comment section, just all they have to say is a VASC 100, first person here gets it. How, awesome. How's that? That's even easier, even easier. A VASC um, 100. Yeah. I've asked 100 is the code, uh, first person 100% off, and second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, get 50% off. So looking forward to uh, hopefully having some people come through. And uh, yeah, just mention mention the code. See, normally you'll have the, the list at the end and we can take it from there. All right, oh, look. Simon, you're, you're always so quick. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, give everyone else a chance, come on. Oh man, all right, we've got some <laughs> others coming through. and. Yarrow, you just have to do it once. Uh, <laughs> anyways, look, um, like we said, this is an incredible prize. This is you know up to about seventeen hundred and fifty pounds, and you're the first uh, or the five other um, people are getting fifty percent off. If you want to take part in that, again, just a Vosk one hundred, and we'll just send over the winners. Over to you, sir. And also, you've got um, they, they've got your email, but we'll we'll do it here. So, who, Kelsey? Let's tally this up. I think we got everybody that we, we can. <laughs> so we have uh, Simon coming in first. Um, Congrats, so I'll, Simon! I'll send over uh, the info for that. Does um, Yarrow win five times? <laughs> Yarrow has had some trouble. Um, also, Tom, I know you have to get going. So, if you need to get going, I can let you know all the information I'm, I'm all good but i just wanted to say that because it's been such a brilliant podcast and i really appreciate you guys inviting me on we're happy to to extend it further uh, so if you guys want to um say that the next 10 people will we'll offer the 50 percent off because i'm feeling extra generous now so <laughs> so 
feel free to keep going, guys. Keep getting your the Avast 100s in, uh, and we'll look after you, I'm sure. Oh, that's uh, that's a, a great deal. That's a really great deal, Tom. So, hey, thank you for coming on, and all of a sudden my computer's uh, installing something. But uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, thanks for coming on the podcast today. I'd love to have you on again, especially when the changes, uh, you know, are, are happening when is it? It's July next year. We could start talking about that the next time we're on the podcast. But there's all sorts of other things that I'd like to, to talk to you about anyways. So thanks a lot. I know you got a call that you got to get on to. And uh, we really enjoyed having you on. Fantastic. Thank you very much for having me, Noel. Really good to, to be a part of it. And uh, yeah, hope to speak to you soon. Say hi to the team for me. Of course I will. Of course. All right. See you later. Have a good one. Speak soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. All right. So... Guys, it looks like, hey, Melanie, you still have to put in the uh, Avask 100. <laughs> it looks like you, you got, you won, but just put in Avask 100 just to make it official. And <laughs> so, so right now we have Simon. Um, Alan. Number one. We have Alan and we have Yarrow. Yeah. And and Melanie, we're gonna we're gonna slip Melanie in there too because uh, she did give the woohoo. Just needed the ab ask. All right, so that's it for today's podcast. Uh, let me see if you are looking at uh, at checking out the whole podcast. You can always go to uh, Norman Farrar, aka the Beard Guy, and listen to the whole podcast uh, highlights and and um, con other types of content. We've got a newsletter that comes out, which really does not suck. Um, just, you know, go over to Lunch with Norm, or you can go over to normanferrar.com and just sign up. It comes out every Monday. It's all content. Uh, it's all content to help online sellers become better sellers. So it's not just Amazon. It's right across the board. It also has different clips and video clips that uh, you can watch in case you don't want to read. Uh, let me see. Our next guest. Our next Christy. guest, Kelsey. Who's that? Yeah. It's Christy. Yeah, Christy Verdi. Is that right? Yeah. Christy Verdi's coming on. So if you guys don't know Christy, you got to tune in. She is a, well, she lives in Montreal now, so a fellow Canadian. But, uh, hey, I really love this lady. She is great, full of energy. Um, she's going to be just uh, talking about um, becoming an entrepreneur, you know, how to be a CEO and run your business like a business. We don't talk a lot about that. And I think it's really important that uh, we do treat our businesses like businesses, especially if it's um, smaller, medium sized businesses. But anyways, we're going to be diving deep with Christy and we'll talk about that. So, Kelsey, do we have anything more? All right. Uh, so. If you enjoyed the episode, please like and share it. Um, there's still time for the contest. Um, if you did win, uh, so Simon, uh, you can contact me at k.lunchwithnorm.com. Uh, um, maybe you can CC me in the email just to make sure that it went through. Uh, and that goes with anyone else that's won that's typed in AVASK 100. So Alan, Yarrow, um, I put in Tom's email here. Um, so you can go ahead and email him. Um, and I'll let Tom know uh, that Simon, you you came first, and yeah. and we'll see how generous Tom is uh, afterwards. Um, and yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. We do have our Facebook group, uh, Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA, and E-commerce Collective, and we are looking for moderators. So if you want to kind of help us out and come up with ideas. Um, you know, discussions, discussions, advice yeah. um, for the group. Just let me know. Um, you can message me on uh, Facebook or my email, k at lunchwithnorm.com. And oh, it looks like Alan. I can't believe Alan is up. Go to bed, Alan. <laughs> As always, these are fun. recorded, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he wants those prizes. Yeah, that's uh, right. But yeah, we uh, really appreciate it. Um, and if you ever have any. Um, tips or advice for us to make this a better podcast, you can always reach us at my email again, k at lunchofnorm.com. Yeah. And yeah, thank you guys. And I do want to uh, just, you know, talk a bit more about that group. So 
the group is about discussion. The group, you know, is really, hey, we can put up all the funny posts you want. Uh, that's great. Like them. But at the end of the day, uh, it's, you know, really becoming a better online seller. So you can open up the discussions. You know, we, Kelsey will, might post something, you know, a poll or whatever. Um, I know that uh, today we just got another from Sponsor Profit. We got another um, uh, bonus that we'll, we'll put into the group. And that's a 50%. I just got it today. So 50% first month, 10% ongoing for their new semi-automatic um, app, which is very cool. Um, so that's going to be posted. I haven't even told you, Kels, it just came in. But these are the types of things that will be happening. Um, there's, again, no affiliates in the in the um, group. But we want you guys, uh, what are you interested in? Ask questions. Um, start talking. Give your opinions. Um, post articles. You know, stuff that um, that we can share with everybody. We want this to be an incredible group. Um, you know, congrats, Kels. You grew this. I think we were at about 200 people in the last month. And we're doing this all organically. We're not trying to get any, you know, paid people to come in. We want people that are just strictly interested in the group and interested in engaging. So that's about it for today. Uh, yep. That's it. I'll shut up. I, I just, I go on too long. Yeah. Anyways, tune in. Kelsey, do you want your allowance? <laughs> what, like $10? No, In it's my... two, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, tune in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. And guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the community and enjoy the rest of your day. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur.